All right, hello everybody, thanks for coming. We are Expresso, where speed doesn't sacrifice quality. My name is Steven Siegfried. I'm Jack Jorgensen. I'm Robert Sabrina. I'm Alexander Palumbo. And I'm Logan Cox. So we're gonna tell you a little bit about our company, uh, starting with the business plan, and moving on to the marketing strategy, organizational culture, uh, marketing management, human resource management, financial performance, and management takeaways. Uh, to start, we're gonna talk about the business plan. Uh, so we ask ourselves, who are we? Uh, and simply put, we are a coffee shop that produces high-quality organic coffee at a fast price or at a low price. Um, in regards to what our market, what market we're serving, uh, college students are busy professionals in the area. Uh, moving on to how we run the business, our goal is to have a high server count, so we can have a lot of uh, employees behind the counter getting each customer's order ready to go and keep the lines short and have the customers be satisfied. Uh, moving on to how we will market the business. So we're given the opportunity to use radio spots and online awareness, as well as offering discounts like 50% off on coffee or uh, two for one deals. Um, and finally, where do we expect to be in three months? Uh, so right now, I guess, or at the beginning when we made the business plan, our hope was to at least break even after three months, but we decided we were, we were gonna come back to it after a week or two uh, to get more clear projections. Uh, so management strategy, uh, a lot of things shifted uh, that we had originally planned after the second week uh, when there were special decisions being added on, uh, also seeing how other companies were doing in the area. Uh, so to start, competitors, Downtown Bean was our leading competitor at the time, uh, so we wanted to monitor the industry menus and keep track of their hours and prices and adjust our own prices to kind of meet that and maximize our own profits. Uh, so we concluded that uh, both our hours and prices need to be changed. Uh, so, because our, uh, our our revenue was vastly lower than theirs, but our cup sales were the same, so something needed to be changed. Additionally, after the third week, when we were able to include weekend hours, we took we took a look and noticed that Downtown Bean was open a total of eight hours more than we were on the weekends, and made uh, the most revenue jump in one week throughout the whole simulation. Uh, so, going to pricing and marketing, uh, we realized that our product that we were producing was more elastic than we thought, uh, so we had to mark up the price. When we checked it, it was 75% lower than uh, the leading competitors at the time, uh, as well as marketing adjustments. Originally, we started out with the uh, five spots a day on the radio, and we were doing two-for-one deals, and that was just skimming too much off the top for revenue, and also making our prices be lower was not effective. Uh, finally, weekly decisions. So, I highlighted the top four, in my opinion, that I think were the most beneficial that we did pretty well on. So first off, decided to add baked goods that added a significant amount to our revenue each week. Uh, the next one, false advertising. We were able to offer fair trade products uh, falsely, and the week after, apparently, there was a notice that went out saying that uh, companies were caught doing that in the area, and they were losing business because of that. Uh, there was also a problem employee that didn't show up to work on time, was making others cover for their shifts, and I think we handled that effectively by talking to the person and seeing if that issue continued. And finally, sexual assault. There was a situation during uh, one of our work days where a customer had given one of our employees a high tip in exchange for some sort of act. Uh, she got very offended, and we decided to not make too big of a deal out of it, ask the guy to leave our shop, and kind of just checked in with our employee to see how she was doing. Here at Espresso, we're aware that our executive decisions as managers play a role in the culture that we establish. And that culture bleeds out into the environment. So here at Espresso, we pay attention to the situation situations and needs of our employees. As Steve mentioned before, we had a situation where a customer made an inappropriate remark or remarks to one of our staff members and we dealt with that. Here at Expresso, we are cognizant of how we portray ourselves to our customers and how that relates to the customer experience, we chose not to mislead them. 
there was a time where another coffee shop was advertising, advertising fair trade. We could have advertised fair trade as well. It was bringing in lots of people, lots of people were walking into those doors buying coffee. We chose not to do it because we'd be misleading uh, and that would be lying to our customers. And we're also, uh, we here at Express, we coordinate together re respectfully, and that's how we're able to operate, and that's our culture. So in terms of our marketing management, we centered all of our management decisions around our target market, which is the college student and business professional. And what we did there was that we took a product like organic coffee that served with a good quality, um, it's a good quality coffee as well as it caters to the niche markets within the college student space. And we also supported local business by using a local bakery and buying their products so that a consumer could have a great cup of coffee while having a great bakery product so they'll have a two for one deal in our store. In terms of price, we stayed competitive. So week by week, we adjusted our prices, whether we were selling more cups week to week or that our competitors were doing better than us. And in order to analyze that, we used our price to kind of pinpoint off. In terms of promotion, throughout the entire simulation, we saw that the promotion mix that we had between online and radio advertisements was very beneficial to us. And then through special decisions, we also amped up the online and radio ads in order to get more people into our store. For example, when we had the high speed ones. In terms of place, we, um, since we're a fast coffee company, we brought in the green furniture because it was like kind of the middle ground. And then we also saw that as like a one-stop shop where the, we have the fast coffee, you can come in or you can sit down for a bit. And then that's why we also continue to do the high speed internet in order to cater to the customer that wants to come in and get a cup of coffee or if you would like to sit down and relax and do that as a college student. So when it comes to human resource management, um, we began with eight servers and two managers. Um, since we kind of based our whole business idea and slogan around speed, efficiency, while not removing quality, um, we kind of had to ramp that up every week uh, as you know we expanded, as we got more popular. We had to constantly increase the number of servers we had. Um, you look at the grasp, graph I have up in the top right, you can see we started at eight. And we added two, then we added three, then we added five. We were just constantly expanding the entire time. Every week we got new, uh, new employee, new servers. We got two new managers over the, over the course of the first three months. Um, and then beyond that, when it comes to efficiency of our employees, we placed first and second nine out of 13 times in revenue per employee. And that was consistently, so that was back to back. Um, we never went below average revenue per employee so our employees were always moving they were always doing what they needed to do and in order to get them to do that we kind of kept them happy by paying them higher uh, wages than the average wages and not only that each week we would increase their wages by a minimal to a medium amount so anywhere from five to 25 cents and that just kept them happy it kept them productive and uh, that was pretty much how we handled our human resource management and then when it comes to financial performance, uh, we started out with a loan of $25,000. From there, we invested half of it before we even opened up the, our doors. So, um, you know, that, that you gotta spend money to make money. So that's kind of the idea we were going with there. Um, by week four, we had broken even and profited. So uh, that's, that's exceptional when it comes to a business considering most small businesses don't even make profits for the first year, two years, sometimes even three years. Um, and then when it comes to week five, you, uh, you'll you see on my next slide I have a few graphs. Um, we actually did dip when it comes to net income. So uh, the reason for that was because of expansion. So we had to, we doubled the money we were putting in advertisement. We, uh, we extended our hours by like eight to 10 hours per week or something like that. So. Though we did increase the amount of money we made that week, we made way more money that week than we did the other weeks. We didn't actually make money. We only lost, I think it was $93. And the reason for that was because of the expansion. So we kind of had to ramp it up in order to make more money in the following weeks. Um, 
And when it comes to our end game, you know, we, we doubled what we started with. So we started with 25,000. We ended with about 53,000. It was just under 53,000. And, um, you know, if you look at our graphs, you'll see, as I said, for net income, we did dip at week five, but uh, it wasn't, you know, it was, it was literally just under zero. So we didn't really lose money. We lost $100, like, max. Um, and then, as you can see, for our cumulative net income, it just constantly raised. It was constantly going up. We never really lost any money in terms of the grand scheme. So during the simulation, we had to display a lot of ethics and social responsibility. For decision one, we decided to set out a customer suggestion box, which showed we cared about what the customers wanted, and we were also able to use their suggestions to help us improve as a company. And uh, decision two, we held a staff training program, which helped prepare our staff to serve coffee in the fastest and most efficient way. It also ensured that our staff were prepared on how to deal with any customer situation that might arise. And this really paid off over the entire course of the simulation because we had short wait times and high customer satisfaction rates. Decision eight, we uh, faced a situation on a problem employee, as Steve touched on, who was consistently showing up late to work. Um, other employees voiced their concerns about how this was disrupting work schedules. What we decided to do was have a private one-on-one -on -one conversation with this employee about how this behavior needs to be corrected. So we showed good ethics to our other employees by showing that we cared about the problem and also show good ethics to the employee by showing we were willing to give them a second chance. Decision 10, we decided to pay for high-speed internet for our customers. We wanted to give this free of charge just to show that we value that they're coming in and buying coffee and um, we're giving them service. Decision 11, we faced a decision on um, an unwanted sexual advance that one of our employees received. This was in the form of a ridiculously high tip and uh, what we did was extorted, him, extorted the customer out of the cafe without too much drama, and that um, was displaying high standards of social responsibility. And we also showed, showed good ethics by showing that we care about the employee, that she was very upset, and we also showed that our, customer, our employees need to be respected. Um, so we learned that we had to make several adjustments throughout the simulation. One of the biggest ones we had to make was adjusting how much coffee we purchased from a week-to-week -week basis. We had to um, make sure we weren't buying too much, that we wasted coffee, and we had to make sure we were buying enough that we didn't have to just dive into our emergency supply. Another thing we often had to adjust was based on our competitors. We had to adjust the prices we were charging for our cups week in, week out. Um, just in the last week, for example, we had an issue where we had a dip in sales and our revenue, and uh, we analyzed some of our competitors' prices and lowered our price in an effort to get more sales. Um, another thing we had to learn was how to keep employees motivated and happy. As we touched on, we kept employees happy by making sure they were safe and secure through some of our special decisions, and we kept them motivated by paying them a very fair wage. Overall, what we learned was it was most important just to stick to our original mission, which was providing high quality and fast coffee. We attained speed by hiring a high number of servers to ensure we had low wait times, and quality by investing in organic coffee for our customers. So, based on what we've said and what we've learned from this, we hope you see Espresso as a reliable choice for fast, quality coffee at an affordable price. And also, if you have any questions or business inquiries for us, feel free to email or call us at espresso at gmail.com. Thank you for your time.